One cold February evening in 1912, a German physicist named Max von Laue was struck by a thought. What happens if a beam of X-rays is aimed at a crystal? He imagined that the X-rays would scatter off the organized rows of atoms in the crystal, like water waves scattering off a row of buoys in the water. This thought led to one of the most important scientific advances of the 20th century, the discovery that X-rays could diffract, or bounce, off atoms in a crystalline material. This would give us an idea of their chemical structure by looking at where the X-rays ended up. In effect, the X-rays could provide a photograph of the inside of a crystal. Understanding the structure of molecules is very important. Even Einstein commented, It is the most wonderful thing I have ever seen, diffraction on individual molecules whose arrangement is thus made visible. This is developed into the influential field called crystallography. To better understand how scientists are unraveling the mysteries of the atom, we've turned to Dr. James Harper, who studies nuclear magnetic resonance at the University of Central Florida. What does your research mean for those of us who, well, aren't scientists? Finding crystal structure is important because it lets us predict physical properties of materials. For example, if we know the crystal structure, we can predict their optical or electronic behavior. But also it lets us predict um, some things about their biological activity. For example, we studied the anti-cancer drug Taxol and we're able to characterize its shape um, in the crystal structure. And this tells us something about what its receptor should look like. It allows us to design better drugs um, things that might actually fit the receptor a little better, the biological target that it looks for. We've also been able to look at um, catechin, which is an antioxidant that occurs in green tea and apples and a lot of other foods that you probably eat. And we, we can characterize the structure there, which might uh, help us understand its antioxidant behavior a little better. And in the case of catechin, it was quite interesting. This, the crystal structure had never been known, even though catechin has been known as a pure compound for over 200 years. And there's thousands of uh, papers that have been published on it, yet until a few years ago, when we did the crystal structure, no one had been able to solve the structure. Why should we study crystallography? Over the past century, crystallography has really had a revolutionary effect on the entire landscape of science. At the moment, there are nearly a million crystal structures that have been deposited in the various databases, and another 50,000 are being deposited every year. This is really important because it allows us to study the basic processes of life, for example. Recently, there's been a Nobel Prize awarded for the, the crystal structure of the ribosome, which is the structure inside the cells where protein synthesis occurs. Also, for people that are just doing material science, just knowing the crystal structure will allow you to predict everything about the structure, you know, whether or not it's optically going to behave in a certain way, whether or not it has piezoelectric activity and so forth. So knowing crystal structure can be really important for understanding how drugs react and how materials behave. How has crystallography evolved? Yeah, that's a good question. Originally, crystallography was done by growing a large crystal of a material, and then you would place it in an X-ray beam. The X-ray is redirected by the crystal in a process called diffraction, and it records a pattern originally on photographic film, but now we use electronic uh, methods to record the diffraction pattern. This gives us an indirect picture of where the atoms are in the, in the molecule. We can reconstruct the crystal structure based on that. More recently, people have used other methods. For example, um, they can now direct electron beams at structures and get an electron diffraction structure. This has the advantages that very thin crystals can actually be characterized this way. So for example, things that are only one molecule thick can be characterized using electron diffraction. Also, people can use neutron beams to get structure. So they can uh, direct a neutron beam at a crystal and get things like very light atoms like hydrogen, which you can't get other ways. Although these are available now, most people still use the traditional method of using large single crystals and x-rays. About 97% of the structures in the databases are obtained using single crystal x-ray diffraction. X-ray crystallography is an aging technique that has its limits. So what are you doing to improve upon it? Um, we use a method that's called nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy or NMR spectroscopy to do crystallography. It's, it's kind of a process similar to what MRI has done in, uh, for people in hospitals, except rather than use a large magnet in people, we use a large magnet in a chemical sample. We basically had the idea that we could use NMR together with computational methods and get a crystal structure without any kind of diffraction. 
So what we do is we first take a sample and we grind it up, or it may be a powder already, and then we use a computer to predict all the different possible crystal structure for that particular molecule. And then for each of these predicted structures, we calculate using quantum mechanical methods the NMR parameter that we measured, and then we can compare. So we can take all the structures that we uh, determined experimentally and all the ones that we predicted, and we match them up and see where they are, there's a match. And what we expected to see was that a lot of structures matched experimental data, but what we found, in fact, was that only one structure actually matched the experimental data. And so what we've actually been able to do is find a complete crystal structure using only computational methods in NMR. I know it sounds almost like her heresy to say we can actually do crystallography without any kind of diffraction data, but, but in fact that's what we've done in a few cases that we've studied so far. How does NMR crystallography compare to other diffraction methods? I mean, is it really worth all this effort? Yeah, we have actually compared our um, NMR crystallography method with traditional diffraction methods, and what we found is um, we compare favorably. When we compare with you know, some of the best methods around neutron single crystal diffraction, for example, we found that we can get structures that actually rival the neutron data or in some cases actually surpass the data. So what we found so far is that we actually rival or surpass the very best data out there when we get structures this way. We have a process we have to go through, but if we follow it, we get very good structures. One of the things we don't know at the moment, uh, admittedly, is uncertainty in atom positions. All the crystallographers that do diffraction data always come up with uncertainty in atom positions and they report this. Right now, we don't have the ability to characterize the uncertainty at atom positions, so our method does have this weakness at the moment, and we hope to resolve that in the near future. Knowing molecular structure has changed our lives profoundly, from the pills we take to cure disease to the development of new electronics and materials. As with all good discoveries, it's possible that the best applications have yet to be imagined. The more we learn about the structures of molecules and how they work, the more we will be able to create, discover, and explore.